Hello, and welcome to this week's edition of the Hockey House. You may know us from the popular hockey by the site thehockeyhouse.net. I'm Stephen Ellis. My hair is different from last week. I'm Brendan Saunders. And Brendan. Yes? We have another guest with us this week. Hello, Mr. T. Well, How are you? Oh, oh, and it's the other I way. should say our first guest, but he has been on before. He has? Please welcome Victor Finley, who is pretty much does everything CIS hockey related and uh, also is the commentator for the Ryerson men's hockey team. How you doing? That's, uh, yeah, that's right, Steve, and uh, I'm doing pretty well, thanks. It's been a busy morning, but glad yeah. you're here. So, okay, what, what went on today? Uh, well, the CIS kind of blew up this morning, uh, much to the surprise of everybody. Uh, Adam Schell has opted to leave the UBC Thunderbirds, uh, was their head coach, spent just the season there after eight. Uh, at the helm of RMC, so a lot of people expected Adam Schell was going to be in there for the long run with the UBC Thunderbirds, so uh, that bomb kind of dropped. We still don't really know why, but it's kind of sketchy when you consider that the UBC Thunderbirds have had 35 resignations in the past two years out of their <laughs> athletics. Really? So, oh, yeah, maybe I'll go join them. <laughs> yeah, there, there's an awful lot of rumors swirling around it's right like now. I have a chance to, to play. You might, you might, <laughs> you might. Anyone who wants to play for the hockey team, come with me. We're going to try it. Well, you know who the coach is now? Me? Sven Buttenson. From uh, Van Heim, right? From Adler Mannheim, yes. The oh, German team. I'm surprised it wasn't German me. Olympia. How could they not name me the coach? That's, oh, that's, that's terrible news. I, like, I quit. Okay, so how does the Canadian University team like, get that? Uh, you know, that's a great question, Steve. Um, I don't really know, but what I do know <laughs> oh. is that Andreas Carlson is also the assistant coach at York, and of course the Swedish NHL, right? With, uh, the, 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 that, with Tampa Bay and Atlanta back in the day, so that almost makes it me, does happen. It makes me think of the GMHL. It's like, where do you guys come with these, some of these players oh, from like, I know. South Africa and Bulgaria? Like, where do you guys draft That one guy from Belgium. So, uh, well, well, see, Carlson's married to um, uh, an Olympic fencer, though, uh, who happens to be Canadian. Okay. So there's Thank still God. more so for the reason that he's way. there. Yeah, the Budenshin one's kind of random, but, uh, you know, he, he should do well. If Brendan had his way, I think everybody would live in Canada. It's true. It's a great <laughs> place. Saskatchewan's empty, other than Scott Hartnell's family. So come on down to Saskatchewan and be corner gas. Anyway, so you love the CIS hockey as we cover. Uh, why is it so great? Um... For a lot of different reasons. Um, but, but explain kind of what it is. Yeah, okay, so CIS is where junior hockey players go when their junior hockey days are done. They get the education. Of course, there's the uh, the education scholarship package with the CHL that basically pays, you know, per year players' schooling if they choose to go to CIS programs. So, and you see guys from junior A as well, some from junior B, and even some ex-pros come in and play in the league. Dan Lacosta from the Columbus Blue Jackets was probably the most popular case when he went over to play for UNB. And didn't Mike Danton also play? Yeah, yeah. Mike Danton. Uh, St. Mary's St. Mary's. That's right, yeah, of course. Uh, that was a pretty big deal at the time as well. Mm -hmm. um, Jared Allen, another ex-NHLer, went on to play in CIS. So, Peter Delmas? Currently. Yeah, Peter Delmas. Well, actually, he's going to be leaving the University of Western oh, okay. um, this year, actually, in place of Lucas Parasini, former OHL mm -hmm. goaltender of the year. So they're, they're, <laughs> that's a pretty good trade for the Western Mustangs this year. But, yeah, there's a lot of ex-pros, a lot of really good hockey players that, uh, you know, don't, necessarily get the credit they deserve when they go to CIS and it's it's been a league that uh, in the past has certainly stored a few diamonds in the rough of course everyone's talking about Joel Ward these days but you know Matt Darsh was in the NHL mm -hmm. for a little bit Mike Ridley was an excellent player for the Washington Capitals back in the day I was a big fan of uh, Darsh when he was a Hamilton Bulldog and uh, oh, yes. went to play for the Habs and it wasn't a long career he also played for San Jose I believe too. yeah yeah he actually but, finished with San Jose a bit with Columbus as well actually that's who signed him yeah so like, it, was, it was great to see him play like he was a hard-working guy and he's a guy like that was a model, again, a model of hard work, for sure. Yeah, and those are the type of players that, uh, that good CIS programs are churning out. Um, you look at UNB, which is really the pinnacle right now of hockey in the CIS, and the amount of guys they're producing that are going on. Specifically, it seems now, this, uh, this offseason, to the EIHL over in England to play pro. And which is kind of funny, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it happens. You know, it, Different teams have their connections, right? So you see what the University of Alberta, a lot of their guys <laughs> end up going. <laughs> to like the Czech Republic yeah. and you know Sweden and stuff like that. So yeah, it's it's a league that, that not many people know about, but great hockey, more physically mature players than there are in, in junior for sure. And uh, you know there there have been some excellent hockey games in the past, and it's it, I really feel like it's starting to pick up some traction here as as the years kind of go on and, and people start you know finally getting aware of where CIS is. Yeah, like I, I've been to a few games, and unfortunately, one I went to ended up being a, like a one nothing game. Oh, it was a two one game. Against Western, right? Yeah, it was. Yeah. Like, yeah. I, I was kind of sitting there waiting, waiting. The shots yeah. weren't just happening. It was. It was also like right at the end of the season before yeah, the playoffs. That's I think right. both well, teams. Both teams were guaranteed. Yeah, yeah so it's time, just yeah. like those type of games. It's yeah. like. I don't know, what's the point? But uh, anyways, we're going to go to break. We're going to come back, and we're going to talk a bit more about the CS hockey, and of course, we're going to put a focus on Ontario. After that, we're talking a lot about the World Cup of Hockey.
Welcome back to the Hockey House with Steven, Brendan, and Victor. Uh, I know you wanted to ask something. Oh yes, so Victor, obviously we've seen many schools commit like a huge amount of players. We saw St. Xavier earlier in the summer get guys like Bryson Schifroni, former Detroit Red Wing Mitchell Wheaton. Lately we saw Saskatchewan get a former first overall pick, Alex Forsberg. We saw Alberta get a guy like Tyson Bailey, a guy like, um, who actually like, um, from the Spokane Chiefs. Jason Fram. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. like him. He was a former 60-point yeah. guy. And right. they compare him with another guy, Ryan Rayhill, mm -hmm. who was also a New Jersey pick, who I actually liked. He played a really tough game. I thought if you put both of them together, that'd be awesome. But you were talking about the University of New Brunswick, and then I was talking about the Western. Uh, of course, everybody knows the Alberta Golden Bears. Produced a lot of good players. Saskatchewan was really good last year, and now they've committed. Another guy like Connor Gay was another guy I really liked. 72 points in 70 games. What's wrong with the Ontario teams? Why are they not bringing in all of these great? What's what York? What, what's going on with UFT? What's going on with um, with all these Ontario teams? Well, all these guys are getting the like uh, a guy like Mark McIver. I know. Um, I think it was Lakehead was pursuing him. Hey, Mark McIver right. coming here. He's like, no, I'm just gonna go to New Brunswick. And the yeah. same guy like Bryson Chifroni's going to uh, St. Francis Xavier. What's what's going on with Ontario? Well, you know, Ontario's in a tough spot because UNB mm -hmm. and, and Alberta have been doing this for years. They're two of the most well-established programs in the entire, you know, CIS as far as the country goes. But when you look at the recruit class that uh, the teams had access to mm -hmm. in the three major junior leagues, by far and large, WHL was the best. Like they, you know, you mentioned it. They were the few players. Fram, Rehill, another guy, Jesse Lees. Yeah, uh, oh, went yeah, over yeah. to Mount Royal University. That's a great defenseman. Former Coleman Bullrath, they really like. He went Coleman to Dinos. Coleman Bullrath, too, mm -hmm. yeah, with the Calgary Dinos. So there were a lot of quality players yeah. um, that were going for the WHL. And a lot of them like to stay in Canada West. Uh, AUS tends to be able to reel in guys from the WHL. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there's, there's usually a, a few incentives that are added. In that case, that you know, OUA teams just can't compete with in a lot of cases, right? So there's a few. I know Ryerson this year actually one of the better recruit classes, uh, you know, in the CIS. I would say they brought in Josh Chapman, um, former Sarnia Sting, just you know had a little bit of a stint there with Pro towards the end of last year with the Rochester Americans and Elmira Jackets uh, or Jackals. So it, it, you know it happens, but it's just the Canada West teams are so well established and there's so many great players at their disposal and the same goes for the AUS too and and what they offer players a lot of OUA teams just cannot compete but look one thing I thought was interesting is uh, every year Team Canada puts up their world junior team together and they go on to play uh, teams made up of uh, select players in the right. CS and last year it was uh, the whole CS and not just OUA yeah. correct because uh, the one year um, it was um, oh, against God, a bunch yeah. of the Toronto it was the Toronto selects yeah out of uh, York U of T and Ryerson, let's just yes. say let's forget about that yeah, <laughs> yeah that was <laughs> terrible that, that, that wasn't beneficial to anybody well there, except but. for Braden Point yeah, yeah Braden Point <laughs> had a lot of points in that yeah. <laughs> it, it, it turned out to have a great tournament because yeah. of that almost but uh, we saw last Last year, the CAS team went out and actually beat Canada, which, mm -hmm. like, a lot of people thought that was surprising, but that actually shows how good the players are. You know, I was at that first game when, when um, CIS wanted to shoot at 6-5, to five, easily one of the best exhibition hockey games. Probably, I would say, the oh, yeah. best exhibition hockey game I've ever been to in my life. I mean, the intensity was palpable. You could feel it in the entire arena, and, you know, CIS knew. They yeah. came out there with a chance to prove to the entire country that, you know, they're no joke, and they mm -hmm. just, they did that. And, like, I'm pretty sure... Um, wasn't Canada like winning for a good portion of the game? You know, it was back and forth. It okay. really was. I, you know, Canada probably outplayed uh, CIS. I would say for the majority of that. Oh, one. they did, that especially the next day. Oh yeah, the next day CIS didn't have their legs. The next day, yeah. and, you know, Canada was the better team, more talented players. But I tell you, you're gonna have a hard time uh, trying to outwork that CIS team on any given night. But yeah, the fact that those guys actually went out there and competed that well, and then end up beating. Some of the best Canadian prospects. Well, I know. Uh, not really, but you know, uh, <laughs> Hockey Canada, pick me to pick your team. Your team sucks. But Brendan is not a fan of uh, a lot of the players. Well, I was on the show last year when yeah. Brendan went off. God, on they're Canada, awful. So. Jesus, but, me hey. to be the world junior pick. I'll pick. I would win gold every. I'm not even talking silver. It's all gold for Brendan Saunders. If you put me as the Hockey Canada GM for the World Juniors, we're winning every year. What would you say, maybe? quickly, how would you get people to come to games? What would be your plan? For me, it, it really starts with the atmosphere, and I think a lot of schools are trying to, to hitch onto that now because, I mean, at Ryerson right now, it's all about basketball. And last year, yeah. when this team got on a great run, 2,000 people packed into a pretty small gymnasium. It sounded like there was about 12,000 there in that gym. So I think a lot of it starts with the universities. How much money are they willing to put in to get the students out there? Perfect. All right, so that's all we're going to talk about Canadian University of oh, Hockey. God, no. uh, when we come back, we're going to talk about the best of the best and the World Cup of Hockey.
Welcome back to the Hockey House. So, Brennan. Me? That's Steve? It. Huh? Ah, buddy switch. Okay, now I'm me again. Remember when I was you and you were me? No. Okay. But want to play show and tell? What am I telling? Who am I showing? Don't look. Who? Huh? Huh? This is our oh. Jersey Thread Sweater of the Week. Oh, wow. Team Antarctica. Very few people, oh, yeah. like, own one of these. Hey, there's your name on the back. And I know that. Look at that! Uh, we're going to talk about it on a future episode, but basically a guy um, cool. from California, Ryan Ball, um, he's starting an event next year where he will become the first player ever to play on every continent in the world, and Antarctica is the last one. And but not Alex Ball. Ant Ball. Yeah, not Alex Ball, but oh, Antarctica no. does not have uh, an active hockey program, so he's hoping to start started. Anyways, let's talk about some actual good hockey teams. What? Teams at the World Cup of Hockey. I want... Oh, the Canada Cup. Oh, I didn't know what you were talking about there. Oh, yeah, the, the Canada, Canada Cup. Cup. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right. First off, all I want is the team. Which team wins this tournament? It's Canada. Has to be. Uh, Jamaica, but only if Prabhu is the starting goalie. Who's going to win this? Uh, code word for Jamaica is Canada. Canada? I think so, yeah. I'm going to say Canada, too. Hooray, Hattrick! But the sweet. team I think could compete there is Finland. I really like Finland. I'll talk about Finland um. in a minute. We talked a bit on uh, the last episode on... Team Canada, they mm. look good, their offense is good. Yes, yes. What are your thoughts on Canada's roster? I mean, what's not to like about it? Hey, I mean, mister. <laughs> <laughs> Don't like uh, him. <laughs> yeah, well, that, that's fair enough. But, I mean, you look at every position on that team, like even just look at Canada's top four on defense. I mean, they are, you know, airtight. Uh, they've yeah, got yeah. puck movers and Petrangelo on that team as well. You want to throw Muzzin somewhere. In oh, God, equation. that's another guy I don't really like that much. Uh, oh. you, you put, you, but you put Canada's roster on paper, I mean, it's it's... There's the other teams, and then there's Team Canada. Yeah. And, you know, no questions in net with either Price or Holtby. Uh, offense is obviously as good as it's ever been. So, Well, here's another question. Who do you put in net? We had that discussion last night. Yeah, you know, for me, I, you know, I, I have a bit of a love affair with Braden Holtby um, just because he's been so crucial for me in fantasy <laughs> in the last, uh, last nice. few seasons. But, uh, yeah, you know, I think with Price, the, the season ending the way it did for him last year, I, you know, I think it's a bit much. He's going to get starts, I figure. You oh, know, yeah. Price may go against well, someone in Team Europe. Three-round wrong game. Yeah, so. exactly. So Price will get a start. But, I, you know, if, if if you're going to throw it right into the semifinals right now, I would put my faith more so in Braden Holtby okay. and the way he's played down the stretch for his team than Carey Price in the season he had last year. Yeah, and he's playing, playing some of his best hockey. Now, I do want to talk about Finland because that's a team that, of course, we know Finland has been good at every level of hockey recently, except for the Ivan Lincoln tournament. That was, <laughs> yeah. I'm not sure what was going on there. Yeah. Well, Canada sucked too, so they mm. had a good company. That works too. Oh, so, hey, well, so these Canada and Finland played in the finals of the World Championships. Um, Canada won. Finland right. won the under-18s. They won the World Juniors. Uh, now, the World Championship team, a lot of those key players are in this tournament again. Like, um, they got Mikko Koskinen as their third goalie, which kind of strange with some guys like Niemi not there, or Niemi's not playing, and Garletton's not there. Nicholas um, Baxter doesn't exist anymore. But, like, they got Pekka Rene and Tuka Rask, and Pekka Rene's always good when he plays internationally. I think he's a guy that could really shine. And, and defense-wise, they got Samuel Lepesto, who's one of my favorite European defensemen. He's, oh, he, isn't he in, like, every single... Um, like competition that's international for he, Finland. He's he, always on the Four roster. Nations, uh, Euro Hockey Tour, it's always everything. There. It's it's great. <laughs> I love that. But like on defense, they're good. But like the one thing is they don't have any major stars like a lot of, like Canada does or Russia or any of those teams. But what they do is they just play so well as a team because they play so much together. Like a lot of this team again have played the World Championships together. A lot of these guys have trained with the. Uh, the Euro Hockey Tour rosters, and they kind of know what they're doing. But they got guys like Barkov and Aho and uh, Eric Hall, who I like, uh, UC Oaken and Miko Koivu, Patrick Laine, and then a guy like Sebastian Aho, who every time he puts on a finished jersey, he's really good. Oh, what? Now, you oh, know what yeah. I mean? Oh, yeah. What do you guys think they're going to do? For me, I think Finland's going to score a goal, and then they're going to play defense the rest of the way. I mean, they have forwards who are defensively responsible. I mean, Alexander Barkov is quickly turning into one of the best players now two ways. I mean, he was always a solid defensive forward, whether or not he was in the SN Liga or, or with the Florida Panthers when he started out. So, you know, that's kind of the same way Finland ended up with a World Junior gold medal. They got out in front, they locked it down, played a trap. You know, I don't see any reason why they would play any differently here in the World Cup, especially with some really, really solid goaltending, I would say, in Pecorino anchoring them down. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, Finland does the, uh, and here is a hint for all the guys who watch Finland, what they do, so they set up the box, so they set up the four guys right here, and they set up the one guy high, so the one guy high, always they say, okay, so defense, you have to watch out, so you can't pinch, of course, Canada's defense is like, 
we've never even played defense, so we don't know what that means. So that's how they end up with the odd breakaway, but that's definitely what they do. They do the four-man box, and they're gonna break out of the four-man box. This is what you have to do. You can't skate into it. Now, I know Canada has beautiful skaters. They're just wonderful skaters. They can backward skate with an umbrella and a toothpick, but you don't do that. This is what you do. So they have the four-man. Now, for Canada, you, you usually beat traps with speed, right? But for this, you have to dump it. So this is the four-man box, four-man box, you have to dump it, there. and you have to you, <laughs> you have to need go like in, a telestration here and you got to hit them. Like that is the Europeans are not, and the Americans as well are not big fans of getting hit. The only guys that are like Russia and Canada uh, kind of play can play that game. So this is how you beat the trap. So four man box, dump it in, and this is where a good guy like uh, Brad Marchant plays in effect. This is a good good at kind of the dump and chase kind mm -hmm. of thing. That's a guy like a player I'm not a fan of. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but for Finland, that's what you have to do to beat the box. But that is exactly what they do. They do try to do the trap. They had to hang the guy high. They'll go blazing, guns a blazing first period, try to get that one goal, and then play a four-man box. But if they do do that, and people don't do the jump and chase, Finland will have a very good chance to be a good team in this tournament. Uh, you know, I do have to see, like, that's the thing. Like, they're very defensive. You've got to be able to use their speed, and that's the one thing that Finland may not be able to um, contend with. Another team that I think is interesting because they're strong, but they don't have all their big stars, and that's Russia. <laughs> so they've got no Radulov, they got no Voinov, they got no Kovalchuk. Um, am I missing anyone else? Sergei Zubov. Well, they don't have Sergei Zubov. He yeah, lost his hair. they don't. But yeah, <laughs> I don't think that's important. Um, but like, they're missing a lot of scoring up front. And yeah. for guys like Radulov and Kovalchuk, it did seem like they pissed off the Russian uh, team, the, the national team, despite them both playing really well at the World Championships a few years ago. But like, you got that Zuk, who's like dominating the KHL right now. Like, the, he's doing everything well. Malkin's playing great as always. He always is. Uh, Kuznetsov is like, he's on the rise right now. Mm. Um, what are your thoughts on their team? For me, I, I'm worried more about Russia's defense. You know, when you of look course, at always. those guys, you throw in Nikita Zaitsev, and now all of a sudden he's guarding yeah. the best players in the world. I, for me, this is a little too early <laughs> to be putting my faith in Nikita Zaitsev. Now, the goaltending, okay. You know, I'm a huge Andre Vasilevsky guy. Uh, I would take him over Bobrovsky. You know, really? Would, but, uh, Bobrovsky! That's just me. Bobrovsky. But, uh, yeah, for the Russians, you know, I, I'm not going to worry too much about their scoring. The Russians are going to find a way. Whether or not they have all their, you know, big guns, they're Russians, right? Yeah. And, you like, know, you, you put a guy like Sipachov in, right? Or even Evgeny Dodonov, you know, two guys that people don't know much about from the yeah. NHL because they didn't, well, Sipachov didn't even play in the NHL, but Dodonov didn't do much. Big guy in the KHL as far yeah. as offense goes. What well, if he comes in and lights it up? Well, Dodonov, Shapichov, and Panarin have all played together really well. That's right. Championships, a couple yeah. years in a row now. So that's a line that looks great. Um, we, unfortunately, have to go to break again. Oh, God, no. But uh, when we come back, Curses. we're going to finish by talking about two teams I want to talk about, Team Europe and uh, the North American All-Star team. Oh. So, fair. Hello and welcome back to the Hockey House. All right, so mm -hmm. uh, there's two teams I want to talk about. Okay. And first, we're going to talk about Team Europe. You said Europe's not going to win a game. Why yes. is that? Uh, too old for me. You know, I don't buy into the whole experience over skill thing. I just, I don't. Too many guys that are, uh, you know, just a couple steps behind. And in today's game, especially against the best players in the world, you know, one step it could be the difference between a win or a loss, right? So. Dennis Seidenberg, don't buy into it. You know, Andre Sakara, don't really buy into it. Chera, don't buy into that either. Oh, right? like, uh, come on, this is a geezer convention. He could be the like the dad of pretty much the entire like yeah. North America team. Even up front, you've got an aging Marion Gaborik. Uh, as much as I love Marion Hossa, he's not going to carry the load against the Team Canada here in this tournament. So and now I do want to ask you, who's their starting goalie? Oh. I, oh, I'm going to take Frederick Anderson, Danish goaltender. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, has played the well best in the NHL right? in the past. No, he's, yeah. not, he's not the best Danish, the best goaltender. Danish goaltender ever. No, he's not. Yes, that's he George Sorensen. That's not George Sorensen. From the World Juniors. Nope. Steve, nope, do you that's... not remember the World Juniors? Remember, remember his stats back? last year? Yeah, but no one... Okay, discredit last year. Okay, oh yeah. 13, 14, Playing with the Danish league? A 117 goals against average in 16 games played is like a 17-year-old playing against 29-year-old <laughs> dudes. This guy not is women, dominating the league. It was like 5'7". Five foot seven. Steve. He scored a goal once. That's right, he did. He scored it in like uh, against uh, France or something in uh, yeah, World Junior qualifications or something like but that. But so more more fuel to the fire that he's the best Danish goal. Or we can ever. talk. Or we can talk about Frederick Anderson and how he pretty much stole the show at the last Olympic qualifiers. Yeah, but he didn't do it like George Sorensen did. Uh, no, he decided he did it against like really good players. He's got yeah. like a 
full foot advantage height wise on George Sorensen. And uh, he's also been really good. Yeah, but Sorensen's like a peanut in the net. <laughs> well, <laughs> and the guy like, stops the puck know, is like, the size of well, a peanut. Let's just look at the look. Where he's playing. He's not playing yeah. high level hockey. Well, he's playing the Elshvenskin, and then he's going to pull the Tim Thomas and come to the NHL when he's like 37 years okay. old, win a Stanley Cup, and get a Vesna. So it's 17 years old. I know you yeah, <laughs> Okay, 17 years, guys. That's when we'll finish this debate. Anyways, uh, Brent, I want to know your thoughts on Team North America. Wow, they suck. Okay, so the defensemen, it's like poop, poop, okay. poop, poop, poop equals garbage. And I'll tell you why. So their defense is going to have to. Now, Matt Murray, now we've talked about this stupendous goal, stupendous goalie. He should be playing for Team Canada, but they have this stupid Team North America. It's like a video game. But no, their defense is terrible. They're going to have to have Aaron Ekblad, who's as slow as the taxi with flat wheels. They're going to have Ryan Murray, who's going to try to tip every puck off his butt in. They're going to have Morgan Riley, who's going to forget halfway through the game he's the defenseman. Seth Jones, I don't mind. Colton Perenko, I'm really excited to see. Jason Tr or, uh, Truba, Jacob Truba, I've, uh, I've seen play good, and then I've seen him go like. I hate everyone. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, so their defense is horrendous. And also they have the great Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Connor doesn't like to play under pressure. McDavid. Oh, Shane Gossiper, another offensive defenseman who might forget he's a defenseman halfway through. What are your thoughts? You know, I kind of agree with Brendan in this All right, sense. Yeah. Uh, to, yeah, to, a, to a point, I think I'd, they'd probably be better off with George Sorensen and that. Hey, uh, let's hey, not hey, yeah. ourselves. But, I mean, they've got a nice trio of goaltenders in Connor Hellebuck, yeah. John Gibson, and, and, uh, and Matt Murray. I'm Matt not Murray, gonna, I'm not going to question their goaltending, but I agree. Merrick Schwartz is the goal. That's, or, sorry, uh, Merrick uh, Schwartz. George, <laughs> George Sorensen, that's who you think it should be their goalie. Uh, you know what? They'd probably be better off if he was their goalie, yeah. I'll meet you outside later. Sure. But, okay. uh, I'll be no, there, too. I, I, no, you know, like that's a team that it, they've got a lot of skill. They're a good young team. And I think they'll do better than people expect. I agree. I agree with that, Steven. I, I like their defense, but year up, but I don't like their defense. Yes. And yeah. I like their offense. I like guys like Connor McDavid. Oh, like, God. Uh, no he, pressure. He's that terrible. Yeah, yeah. Terrible. terrible. That one time he scored a goal in the game winning. Uh, yeah, but what about the under 18s, the OHL semifinals, the OHL finals? Yeah, the under 18, how old was he when he's playing? Like, yeah, but 12? it's like the first, the final two games, the most important games is like, yeah, I'm a Toronto Marlboro skating around the circles. There's Frederick Gute. Hey, Mom, how's it going? <laughs> and then, oh, God, the next year in the OHL um, uh, semifinals against Guelph, and then the world first World Juniors he was in, and then you go the next year against Oshawa in the finals. He was like, well, how many minuses can I be? I'll try to be as many as I can. Oshawa, score on me. Okay. Okay, quickly, though. Are you excited? Yeah, sure. Sure. Call the Canada Cup and bring teams back, not North America or Europe. I'm actually excited for the tournament, but not as much as I was in 2004. This was the tournament that got me into hockey. To think now that it is kind of strange as it is. Because, like, you know what? Teams like Slovakia should be here. Teams like Germany should be here. Yeah. Do you want this to be a world? Denmark. Denmark with uh, <laughs> the <Peter> Pina. goalie. <laughs> and, uh, like, there's so many good countries that could have their, their skill on display. And, unfortunately, we just aren't going to see that with the two weird uh, teams. But that's just how it is, unfortunately. But, anyways... Thank you very much for coming on, Victor. It was oh, yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Uh, where can we find you on Twitter? Uh, you can find me at finder underscore two four, uh, tweeting a lot about CIS and a few other odds and ends that uh, that may come across. So. Awesome. I'm Stephen Ellis, NHL. I write about international hockey, of course, and a lot of junior hockey. Brendan doesn't use social media, so but don't, I have don't my search hair. So you see he does have a Twitter account, but don't search for him. There's no point. Uh, you can always check out the Hockey House on Twitter. Anyways, that's all we have for today. Don't forget to visit the Hockey House on for all episodes of the TV show. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. I'm Stephen Ellis. I'm Victor Finley. I am Brendan Saunders. Thanks for watching.